Hey everybody, it's me, Miss Patty. Welcome back to session number one, two, three, three of our Beatitude Sunday School lessons. And parents, remember, anytime you need to pause, that's the beauty of pre-recorded Sunday School. Pause us, take time for some discussion, and it will bear much fruit in your family. All right, so our welcome question for this week is this. Have you had a highlight this week? I had a highlight. It was a snow day. I love snow. I don't love shoveling snow so much. That's a tongue twister, isn't it? Shoveling snow so, so much. I don't love shoveling snow. But I do love how beautiful it is outside when it snows. So that makes my heart happy. So that was a highlight for me this week. What was your highlight? How about a low spot? I guess my back after I shoveled was my low spot. What was yours? Either way, remember Jesus loves you okay all right here comes the dude hello and welcome little bros to the beatitudes third lesson today we'll join a huge crowd of people following jesus he sees their hurts and pains and cares for them in many ways. He leads them to a mountain. Do you remember? Let's climb a mountain. Can you hike? Can you roll? Can you climb by yourself or with a friend? Pick a way to move up the mountain. Ready, set, let's climb. Woo, we made it. Let's find a seat and settle our bodies after that climb. In your imagination, let's look around at all we can see. In Jesus' time, people believed mountains were holy and special places to be with God. Maybe because they could reach up high in the sky. Hmm. Jesus told people about God's kingdom on a mountain. You can think of a kingdom as the way the world works or is set up. In God's kingdom, there is abundance. More than enough honor, food, money, love, and power, and resources for every child of God to thrive. And Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When you hear the word poor, what do you think of? We often think of not having enough money or food or a home or clothes or anything we need for our daily life. Jesus saw how the wealthy people in charge demanded lots of taxes. They took the money people earned to run their cities and to live really, really, really expensive lives. People were struggling to provide for what they needed. When they could not pay the taxes, those in the government took the rest of what they had. 
their land, their money, and in terms their honor were taken away from them. They lost everything. It was sad. Many of the people Jesus spent time with were poor like this, but they also felt poor in spirit. They were sad and worried that things would never get better. They felt trapped, and their biggest fear was that tomorrow would be just like today, or even worse. They did not feel blessed. Maybe you have felt that way too. But little bros, Jesus told them, blessed are the poor in spirit. What? Jesus turns what they've been taught upside down. And he says heaven and the kingdom of God belong to all the people who are poor in spirit. They are the blessed, happy ones. When it feels like the rich, the one who seems to have it all and know it all, have all of everything. Jesus says that true honor and belonging belong to the poor because they are gods. We can live this out. You could clench your fist. We often think a fist as a sign of power and strength. But when your hands are closed, you can't receive anything. Jesus had a different idea. Open your hands on your lap, palms up. This is a way to remind us that we depend on God and must be open to learning, growing, and changing. It's a great thing to do when you pray. Try it, little dudes. So when you feel helpless, God will fill you up with all you need. Things better than we could imagine ourselves. Wow, dude. Thanks for explaining the Beatitude lesson for us this week. Before we transition to our next activity, I would like to bless you. A blessing is something you receive, remember? So hold your hands out like you are about to receive a gift, and I'll speak a blessing over you. And if you receive it, then you can take it and put it in your heart. Here's your blessing. Child of God, you are blessed whether you feel happy, sad, angry, or afraid. You are blessed. Let's go back to the dude. So, little dude. Have you ever had a time when you wondered if things would get better? Do you know anyone who is feeling poor in spirit right now? How could you help? Where do you see people who are very rich and people who are not? How is being open to God's love, a sign of power. Think about it, and I'll see you next week. Hey there. We were just thinking about blessings back in Jesus' time and being blessed, whether we're happy, or sad, or angry, or, <gasps> yikes, afraid. 
Now, we use emojis these days to help us when we text, tell people how we feel. But this is always a pretty good indicator of how we feel. I would like for you to think about how someone might feel as I give you some fact situations, some circumstances, and you tell me how someone might feel. You can show me with your face, happy, sad, angry, or afraid. Or show your parent, or your guardian, or the other caring adult that you're watching Sunday school with. Okay? All right. And anytime you need to pause to think or to talk, you go right ahead. Taylor has a birthday party and most of Taylor's class is able to attend. Frankie almost scored a goal, but the goalie blocked it. Jaden's friend stole their favorite water bottle from their backpack. There is an unexpected knock at your front door. Davion watched a show and it had a creepy monster in it. Consuelo's cat is sick. Ryan made a really bad mistake on his test. Parents didn't know where their children were playing. Hmm. After you talk about these things, you might have some other ideas of scenarios, scenes that you can share that might tell others that care about you how you're feeling. And guess what? God loves you, no matter how you're feeling. He loves you if you're sad. He loves you when you're afraid. He loves you even when you're angry. Even when you're angry at him, he still loves you. And he loves you when you're happy. When we can name how we feel and tell others how we feel, it helps us relate better to everyone around us. When we can use our words to describe our feelings. All right, boys and girls, children of God, let us end today's Sunday school session with a prayer. Are you ready? Loving God, we open our hands. We open our hearts and we open our minds to your loving spirit. Thank you for promising to fill us with what we need and to give us hope when situations feel stuck. We trust and depend on you and all of God's children said amen. 
Christ Jesus. See you next week.